This video is sponsored by Dubby Jitterless Energy Blend and by Reaper Apparel Company. Stay tuned till after the video to learn how you can save 10% off of your order. Some states have some Hey, what's happening ladies and germs? This is the Packer Man and welcome to today's edition of Burnt Rubber. Where today we have a Supercars edition. God damn it, cat. Go lay down. <laughs> Butthead. Uh, but uh, we got some IndyCar news that we got to get into. So let's do it today, shall we? So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is something that was actually broken uh, a little while ago. Uh, IndyCar is going to implement a charter system beginning in 2025. Now, I know the first thing that you're thinking, oh shit, here we go again. Oh shit, here we go again. But, um, right now, it's too early to say if this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing for IndyCar. Um, because we've seen how the charter system has been implemented in NASCAR and how it's become... A massive clusterfuck based on, of course, the lawsuit that's ongoing. But uh, here's some things about the uh, IndyCar side of things as far as their charter system that they'll implement in 2025. The charter system creates an open marketplace across the series. Charters were extended to team owners based on full-time entries over the previous two seasons with a maximum of three awarded per team. A team owner in possession of a charter may sell to a prospective buyer subject to IndyCar's approval. And these are the 10 teams that have accepted charters for 25 entries beginning with the 2025 season. Two for AJ Foyt Racing, three for Andretti Global, three for Aero McLaren, three for Ganassi, two for Dale Coin Racing, two for Ed Carpenter Racing, two for Junkos Holliger Racing, uh, two for Meyer Schenk Racing, three for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing, and three for Team Penske. A chartered entry is guaranteed a starting position on the grid at all NTT IndyCar Series races, excluding the Indianapolis 500 presented by GameBridge. Chartered entries have access to qualify for the NTT IndyCar Series Leader Circle, an annual award program that compensates the 22 top finishers in the prior year's championship. And I think that was the biggest thing that was coming out of this, the fact that, you know, it said that the charter system would guarantee... Uh, spots on the grid except for the Indianapolis 500 that was the big thing leave the Indianapolis 500 alone okay let that be the one race where you have to qualify your way in which is something that I think NASCAR ought to think about doing for the Daytona 500 I mean just think about how crazy that would be but qualifying for the Daytona 500 is pretty much an afterthought you know so we'll have to wait and see how this works out I mean, hopefully the IndyCar doesn't implement a bunch of bullshit like NASCAR has done. So we'll have to wait and see how the charter system in IndyCar turns out. Now, this one was certainly controversial when it was first announced. And that is IndyCar has confirmed a new street course race in Texas in 2026. That will take place around the two major uh, sports arenas. Um, which I think is for the Texas Rangers and the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, it's a 2.73 mile street circuit. Um, and of course you saw the layout and the little quick little blip uh, before this segment began. Um, I mean it's an interesting circuit. It looks like there's opportunities for... Uh, some drafting because it looks like they got it has some long straightaways um, But needless to say it has certainly sparked a huge debate online as to you know Why are we not going to Texas Motor Speedway, you know and all, all this other stuff, you know, and here's the thing I mean, Everybody knows that I despise Texas Motor Speedway because the racing in NASCAR in particular is pretty garbage at Texas but um IndyCar, from time to time, actually puts on some banger racing at Texas Motor Speedway. The problem lo lies in the fact that the attendance was just abysmal. Like, it was just absolutely abysmal. And, I mean, they needed to change a pace. Because, as good as the racing can be at Texas in the IndyCar series, they're not seeing much in the way of an audience. 
So, I guess in one way I can understand why IndyCar would want a street course race in Texas because, you know, it's still a big market, you know. But obviously it is caused it is quite divisive amongst the fan base to say the least. So here was the official announcement from IndyCar regarding the new Grand Prix of Arlington coming in March of 2026. So about a year and a half away. Penske Entertainment, Dallas Cowboys, Texas Rangers team up for IndyCar Grand Prix of Arlington. So on Monday, October the 7th, 2024, three championship organizations are uniting to bring an NTT IndyCar Series race to the streets of Arlington, Texas. Penske Entertainment, the Dallas Cowboys, and Rev Entertainment, the official events partner of the Texas Rangers, have announced a first-of-its-kind joint venture to establish and operate the IndyCar Grand Prix of Arlington with the initial race set for March 2026. The 2.73-mile track layout will feature two iconic sporting venues recognized by fans around the world, AT&T Stadium, home of the National Football League's Dallas Cowboys, and Globe Life Field, home of Major League Baseball's Texas Rangers. The track will weave through Arlington's core sports and entertainment district, which features an all-star lineup of events and venues and annually sells more than 1.6 million tickets to spectators near and far. A celebration ceremony will take place tomorrow morning at Texas Live, a special entertainment center located between AT&T Stadium and Globe Life Field. The ceremony will unveil additional details about the proposed event, including a video that showcases the full track layout. Tomorrow's gathering is closed to the public. Any media attending must RSVP using this link. The new racing event will provide the City of Arlington and its organizers a national network television showcase, with Fox set to provide live coverage through its recently unveiled partnership with IndyCar. The NTT IndyCar Series is North America's premier open-wheel racing competition, featuring stars from across the globe competing at speeds faster than 230 miles per hour. Along with hosting the world-famous Indianapolis 500 presented by Gainbridge, the series boasts a mix of oval, temporary street circuit, and permanent road course races across North America, with the IndyCar Grand Prix of Arlington set to become its newest high-octane marquee event. The NTT IndyCar Series is sanctioned by IndyCar, the governing body for North America's premier open wheel racing series, and part of the Penske Entertainment family. So, will this work out for IndyCar? I mean, as usual with new events like this, I take a wait-and-see approach. Uh, I, it is something that I'll probably cover on this channel at some point. Um, but I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach on it. I mean, they're partnering with the Texas Rangers and the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, monetarily, that has to be a pretty big boon for IndyCar, so there's that. And, of course, IndyCar is now on Fox, although... I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing considering their reputation with NASCAR in recent years. But um, yeah, this is on. A, this has obviously caused uh, a lot of discourse online. A lot of people seem to like it. A lot of people seem to hate it. Some are kind of indifferent to it and some are not sure like me. I'm like, I'm not sure if this will work out for them or not. I mean, if the racing's good, who fucking cares, you know? But we'll have to wait and see on that approach, so. But there's one other piece of news that was honestly a pretty big bombshell on the IndyCar side of things. And let's go ahead and get into that. Michael Andretti has decided to step down from day-to-day -day operations at Andretti Global. Now, of course, he had been trying to get his team onto the grid for Formula One, uh, partnering, partnering with uh, GM and Cadillac. To try to get on the grid. Uh, the funny thing is the FIA approved the entry and yet their media rights owners, Liberty Media, decided, eh, no, we're not doing that. Which has resulted in um, an antitrust lawsuit against Liberty Media from the government. Basically saying, hey, why aren't you letting Andretti Global into Formula One? You know, so... There's that whole situation going on as well. But he wrote an open letter and it's posted on their website. And I think he also posted it on Twitter. And this is what the uh, open letter 
uh, said, To our fans, I was born a racer from an early age. I didn't know anything different than life in the fast lane. Being a son of, be the proud one, came with a high bar. And once I pressed the gas, I never looked back. I stopped at nothing to find success. I drove for the passion and love of the sport, but I won for the fear of losing. My father's childhood dream became my destiny, and together we built a legacy and a family business. When my driving day slowed, I set my sights on creating a space that would inspire future drivers to go faster than I had. I believe that together with the help of many very qualified and passionate team members, I have been able to do just that. For the past two decades, our team has seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. We've grown on a global level that I believe is still untouched in motorsport, and we've seen some of the best talent in racing proudly wear the Andretti badge. Many of my best memories have come at the wheel of this organization, and I am so proud of what we have built. But decades of running flat out doesn't come without sacrifice, and after much thought and reflection over the past several months, I came to the decision to take a step back. I've had a day-to-day -day operational role since even before I stepped out of the race car, and it's time now to pass the baton to my partner and friend, Dan Towers. As I make this decision for myself, my family, and this team, I know this is somewhat of a shock to many, especially you, the fans, my extended family. For many of you, you've watched me grow up, or you've grown up right alongside of me, and no matter what moves we've made as a team, you've stuck by our side at every turn. It is not lost on me that the generations of Andretti fans are the best in the business. I'm honored to be considered a fan favorite, a role model, and a friend. And I thank you for a lifetime of support and in some cases, your brutal honesty. But I am not going away. I will be serving as an advisor for the team and will be available to help wherever I can. While you might see me less at the racetrack, know that my passion for the sport and my support for our team and its people will remain unwavering. My hope is that you as Andretti fans will keep supporting our team with the same enthusiasm and lo loyalty that you so graciously shown myself and my family over the years. I'm excited about the opportunity to spend more time with my beautiful family, including my 10-year-old twins, embrace my new no-no title, and explore new things on a personal level and with my other businesses. So this isn't a goodbye, it is just the turning of the page. With my sincere thanks and appreciation, Michael Andretti. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, pretty big deal. With Michael Andretti stepping down from day-to-day -day, day -day operations for Andretti Global. But he will remain on board as an advisor to the team. So, how the team uh, continues from this point forward uh, without Michael as the uh, head of day-to-day -day operations, I don't know. Will things improve? Will things get worse? As usual, only time will tell. But that's going to do it for this edition of Burnt Rubber. Next time, I have a bone to pick with the Repco Supercar Series because they're implementing a playoff format. What the actual fuck? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Hey, what's happening, ladies and germs? This is the Packer Man letting you know that tonight's video was sponsored by Dubby Jitterless Energy Blend and Reaper Apparel Company. Dubby Energy is a jitterless energy blend that contains coffee fruit extract and was designed to give gamers a boost of energy without all the downsides of regular energy drinks like crashes and harmful ingredients. And there are several different great flavors that you can try such as Dragonade, Push and Punch, Galaxy Grenade, Beach and Peach, Watermelon Nada, and the limited edition Palm Blom flavor. And don't forget to get you a plastic shaker while you're at it. If you're interested in giving W Energy a shot, there's an affiliate link down in the description box below. In addition to W Energy, this video has also been brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. By clicking on the affiliate link down below in the description box, you'll be able to browse through many of their different wares, such as hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and other cool items. When you place an order and you go to checkout, be sure to type in the code PACKERMAN and you'll be able to save 10% off of your order. Special thanks to both Dubby and Reaper Apparel for sponsoring my channel. Hey everyone, this is the Packer Man, and thank you for watching tonight's video. 
be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more great content. See you again next time.